as you look back today and you're sitting with the uh, five of the gentlemen that you started this story with, is there a sense of good God? I can't believe we did it. Before I answer your question, let me thank uh, Nandan Nilekani and uh, Salil Porik for reviving the company in 2017 and accelerating the growth over the last five years. It is an extraordinary journey. What has happened since 2017 till today is truly extraordinary. We who have been watching it with admiration are all so proud of what these two people, with their teams, of course, have achieved. Therefore, a big note of gratitude to both these people. Now, when we founded Infosys, there was a discussion in my uh, one-bedroom apartment in Mumbai in May 1981. The company was registered in July 1981, but this discussion was about deciding on what is it that we need to seek in coming together and then uh, moving forward. There was a discussion as was, as became usual with emphasis, long discussions on strategic issues in, a, in, a, in an environment of enlightened democracy. And finally, we agree on seeking respect from every stakeholder. So we wanted to create a company of the professional, for the professional, and by the professional, as Abe Lincoln defined the US democracy, to seek respect from every one of the stakeholders. That was our first objective. The second thing that we decided was we all came from middle class families. Well, a couple of these, our people, you know, all these uh, six or seven, whatever it is, seven, Mr. Raghavan is not here today. Uh, uh, they were from upper middle class, but the rest of us were from lower middle class. But one thing was very clear. Our values were in total sync. We all had the desire to conduct an experiment in the democratization of wealth. That has not happened in this country since 1980s that we took that decision. Third, as people with high aspiration, we wanted to demonstrate to the world that it is possible for a company registered in India to demonstrate the highest level of governance, the highest level of excellence in running the company and in every function. So I would say that uh, these were some of the top level uh, objectives that we set for ourselves. And have you been able to achieve all of those objectives? By and large, yes. By and large, yes. We, we have done that. But we have to remember that uh, all of us agreed that we want to be a company that moves on to at least 100 years. As you know, Shireen, you know better than I do, that the oldest ever company is about 250 years old. Uh, so we said at least for 100 years, this company has to flourish. So therefore, I would be less than honest if I said that we have completed our task. Right now, it is in the hands of two extraordinary people. We are cheering them from the sidelines. And I have no doubt that they will pass the baton on to equally competent and equally value-based people. That's what I would say.
Okay. It hasn't been an easy journey, clearly. I mean, there are differences. Uh, there hasn't been consensus on every issue, but you have evolved a consensus mechanism through the course of the last four decades to be able to get to where you are today. As you look at the journey today, uh, you know, rewind back to some of the inflection points, and more importantly, as Mr. Murthy says, you know, if he, he's given you the task of uh, another 60 years for the com company to flourish, uh, uh, what, what are you going to do? What does the action agenda look like? Well, uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, Shireen, and you've been always been watching us, and you know more about us than we know about ourselves, so it's a little problematic sometimes. Uh, I think, first of all, let me say that uh, uh, when I met uh, Murthy way back in 79, he was the most charismatic leader I'd met. And uh, I think uh, he spotted talent, or hopefully talent, and he gave us opportunity. And frankly, if he had said, jump off the cliff, we would have jumped off the cliff. It was that, that, that level of uh, uh, loyalty and, uh, uh, you know, we had for him. So when he proposed the idea of this company, it was a no-brainer. And we must remember something that the, the rest of us who are about 10 years younger than him and with Raghavan, we didn't have much to lose. You know, we were in our 20s. You know, it was not a big deal. But for him, it was a huge thing to lose because he was at the top of his career. He was the head of the software group at a very good company. He was earning a lot of money. And for him, frankly, and his wife, Sudha, who gave up a job at Telco, I think the costs of doing this were much, much higher, and he just took it. So I think... Uh, we we were uh, very committed to that, but I forgot your question. I think you know we're having this problem. All of us are having senior. The, the other the other thing that Nandan Dilikini told me is that make sure that you get a team that grows old together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, that yeah, clearly this yeah. is clearly a sign See, of that. Now we are all into our senior <laughs> moments. So if you find that we forget things, please excuse us. No. We are we are past our prime. <laughs> Yeah. No, my question was, for the next 60 years, he set you clearly yeah, no, an I think, agenda. Uh, uh, I think I do have this uh, huge uh, responsibility uh, because I, as, uh, going back to his phrase of uh, 2006, I'm the last of the jokers left. <laughs> do you miss having the other jokers around? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, no one to talk to. I only talk to Salil, but <laughs> Salil is so busy selling that I do, can't talk to him also. <laughs> so, uh, so I think my... My challenge is a little more acute because, you know, since I have some founders clout and all that, founder, I can do some. But I'll be f handing over to a chairman at whatever point that I exit from the scene who will be the first, uh, not the first, but a non-founder. And now there's no plan B now. I mean, you know, if, if I hand over to somebody and it doesn't work out, there's no plan B. You know, I can't come back at some 75 or something like that. So, and I don't think any of these guys want to come back either, so. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should ask them. Yeah, you can ask any, them. You can, they may, maybe they want to come back. They haven't told me. So anyway, I think the, uh, uh, so there's no plan B. So I have to make sure that when I exit the scene, I implement his uh, vision of uh, putting in place the leadership structure, people, and uh, with the right values to take it forward. So that's really actually the biggest thing on my head. You know, and that's a serious issue, and I want to get you to comment on what you just said, Nandan, because as you pointed out, you said there is no plan B. Yeah. In light of what has happened previously, what is it that you believe needs to be put in place to ensure that you get it right? Because this has been a challenge, uh, let's be clear about that. And secondly, uh, you know, do you believe that in hindsight, and I want to ask each one of you, and Mr. Muti, I want to ask you as well, that this hard coding that at 60 you need to move away, at 60 you need to retire, at 60 it is the sunset, do you believe in hindsight today uh, that maybe it should have been different? No, I mean, look, if not 60, maybe 65. All that is fine. But look, at the end of the day, we are all mortal, right? We are all we're not going to be around. And that's that one of the reasons why we're having the 40th is we don't know whether they're there for the 50th. So, <laughs> really, seriously, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm, Let's get this done because I don't know what's going to happen 10 years from now. So uh, we, so we, you have to, how do you, and how do you create institutions that outlive you? How do you create institutions that cross generations? How do you create institutions that mo move from an ownership model to a totally professional model? In fact, when we first began, Murthy said, we will be the ultimate professionals company. I remember our first tagline was mm. professionals company. But what you realize now is that you know you need to have a co combination of you know professional ownership all that stuff so i think uh, it's it's not clear to me uh, what's going to happen
it's not clear to you what's going I mean, to be that, that's, that's not very reassuring to hear no no i i, mean, I haven't found uh, yet uh, a person whom i can hand off to i mean, let's put it that way what is the timeline that you're giving yourself i'm not going to talk here <laughs> okay all right uh, i i want to understand from you how do you uh, look back in the rearview mirror at what the story has uh, has turned out to be and what you believe has got it to where it is well what has got us where it is today includes not just the founders it includes 350000 people mm -hmm. now plus many more who have passed through the portals of infosys you know it's a, it's a collective uh, um, i think collective effort of all the people uh, yes you know there have been um, leaders who have uh, driven the company and there will be leaders in the future too um, what has uh, i think what has uh, i think made us successful is that and, and we saw this yesterday you know in some of the panel discussions that we have had as part of the um, 40th anniversary celebration uh, everyone you know demonstrated or talked about their passion for infosys the infosys um, uh, purpose uh, the idea that is infosys i think mo as as i look back um i think the that idea of infosys the purposeful organization has been embraced by a large number of people i think collectively they have made sure that uh, the company progresses in the right direction that i believe is what uh, made the difference for the company what do you believe the learnings can be from the past as you look at the future uh, so as you said i think infosys is a company which believed that strategy is 5% and execution is 95% if you look at the last 40 years um, you know you can see it at every step of the way um, we have done so many things first uh, in india we were the first indian company to get cmm level 4 cmm level 5 we were the first indian company to have employee stock option plan which created all of this wealthy wealth um, first indian company to be listed on nasdaq so so each one of these are actually execution milestones now when i look at um, uh, the you know one of the fundamental premises which we had in 1981 it was that technology will become eventually ubiquitous and that has happened in many ways today technology is ubiquitous but i don't think the story has ended mm. i think in the next 100 years the 60 years which dandan will see through <laughs> there will be a great many opportunities which will come the way of uh, not only infosys the indian industry as as well and finally it comes down to taking advantage and executing to those opportunities you need to give me an un unheard untold story so actually i remember in 1991 um infosys was trying to establish a connection between bank rural and connectivity um g was our, one of our biggest clients and infosys wanted to establish this connectivity between bank rural and connectivity and mr murthy um so i was in us at that point in time mr murthy met me and said shibu we have to establish this connectivity so um at that time so i asked him mr murthy give me some money so that i can do this he said he started at 10000 dollars to do this uh, connectivity finally i convinced him to give me 100000 dollars that was the budget which he approved and of course the connectivity got done it probably was one of the first in india to establish that kind of a connectivity not only that we established the connectivity in a hub and scope uh, hub and spoke model so that we could connect a lot of clients over to that uh, that line and i think it became a standard over a period of time so um, you know i always remember this that mr murthy said shibu please get this in, done in 100000 dollars in 100 days that's all you have i think i don't think i, I delivered it in 100 days i delivered it in 